Ambassador. Hello, welcome. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. I've <laughs> nice heard so much you. about you. <laughs> so I hear this is your first posting as an ambassador. That's Congratulations. True. Well, thank you so much. My favorite flowers. <laughs> thank you. And I also heard that you've been very busy promoting relations between the two countries. Well, uh, because of coronavirus and the social distancing, uh, things are a bit quiet, mm -hmm. but yes, we are getting busy now <laughs> and uh, there's a lot going on. So shall we go inside and talk about that? Yes, I'd love to hear them. Please, welcome. Wow, got a nice place here. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Let's have a seat. Sure. It's a lovely painting you've got up on the wall. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a Pakistani artist uh, right. who has painted the Lahore Fort. Ah. And uh, this uh, artist is very famous in Pakistan. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, his name is Askar. Lahore, is, as you know, is mm. the cultural capital of Pakistan. Yes. And uh, there are many historic mm. buildings mm. of Mughal era mm. that you can enjoy when you visit Pakistan. Yes, yes. It's nice to have, uh, you know, paintings that remind you of home when you're away from home. That's true, actually. <laughs> and uh, having your own uh, uh, things, uh, mm. around yes. you yes. makes you uh, feel at home yes and I'm, I'm so I'm so happy and proud to have all these paintings mm -hmm. so I, I read here that you've had a very interesting career you have a master's degree in physics <laughs> um, I'm curious how you changed course and decided to become a diplomat well it, it, it was an accident in my life <laughs> I should say it wasn't planned tell uh, us I grew up in a family of scientists wow. and uh, my father was a mathematician so mm -hmm. all of us grew up uh, uh, wanting to be scientists mm -hmm. and when we were growing up uh, the idea was that uh, the smart kids get to study science <laughs> so that was okay. the idea and uh, uh -huh. that's how we all following the path of science uh -huh. uh, but at the same time at my home we were encouraged to have uh, uh, a variety of uh, interests uh -huh. um, to, to study literature and poetry and mm. uh, we were very politically conscious because my father was. So we were, we were also very aware of uh, our surroundings and uh -huh. international affairs. Oh. And uh, so gradually it became obvious that uh, my interest mm. lay elsewhere. Mm. And uh, it was um, when I re really reached college, yeah. when I realized that um, I wanted to join uh, Foreign Service of Pakistan. Uh -huh. And um, I realized that uh, there were many, many smart people around me who were not studying science <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who were um, ready to serve uh, the country uh -huh. and uh, who were ready to make a difference in the world. Mm. So mm. that inspired me. And uh, then the uh, rest is history. I see. That's mm -hmm. very interesting. Mm -hmm. I heard you did a lot of research about Korea before coming here. Mm -hmm. What did you find through your research? And were they anything different when you actually arrived here? When uh, I learned that uh, I was uh, coming to Korea as ambassador, it was uh, very exciting. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, also kind of terrifying because this is my first ambassadorial <laughs> and uh, I tried to study as much as possible. But at the same time, when I came, mm. I realized no matter how many books you read, it's mm. not the same thing as living in a, in a particular society. Yes. I've had Korean friends uh, in my life. Uh, uh -huh. they, I've studied with them. I have worked with them. Uh, so. So it's not that Korean society was new to me, uh -huh. but um, what I found very uh, awe-inspiring mm. was that they're so open and welcoming and uh, always smiling mm. and, the, and so polite. Yes. That is something that uh, really impressed me. 
Mm. This is something that you don't find in books. You, <laughs> you, course, only, you can yeah. only feel with your heart yes, when, when you interact with people. It's good to know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you visited the head of Choge Order um, mm -hmm. as your first official visit. How was the visit? Very, very interesting. Uh -huh. I know that president of the Choge Order, mm -hmm. Venerable Won Hung, has visited Pakistan late last year uh -huh. and uh, he went to Pakistan to pay pilgrimage to holy holy Buddhist sites mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. Pakistan mm -hmm. and uh, with him there were over 80 monks uh, who traveled with him uh -huh. so I wanted to continue the connection that was established uh -huh. when he visited we discussed uh, many ways in which we can have uh, further cooperation uh, between uh, Buddhists in Korea and uh, Pakistan. And uh, we are uh, going to have uh, more exchanges, mm -hmm. trying to encourage more Koreans to travel to Pakistan and visit all these holy sites. Mm -hmm. And we also discussed uh, ways how we can introduce to the people of uh, Korea, uh -huh. this, this link that our two people have uh. of, uh, of Buddhism. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a very, very interesting meeting. Yes. Talking of Buddhism, mm -hmm. um, ascetic Buddha of mm -hmm. Pakistan is mm -hmm. very well known to Koreans mm -hmm. as the treasure of Pakistan. Can you tell us about this particular piece? Can I show you? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, so this is a book about the Buddhist heritage of Pakistan. Uh -huh. And if you see the cover page that has the ascetic Buddha uh -huh. and uh, inside, I can show you in more details. This is the piece. Right. You know, about a hundred years after Lord Buddha, the religion of Buddhism mm -hmm. was facing persecution in uh, the Ganges Valley. Uh -huh. So there were movement of Buddhists to, to this region called Gandhara. I see. And uh, many, many Buddhists were coming to this place and uh, because of their arrival, uh, the people around them were also embracing the religion. Mm. Then the religion became more expansive when uh, King Ashoka was ruling the subcontinent mm -hmm. and uh, he converted to Buddhism uh -huh. and he patronized the religion I see. and that was the time when Gandhara civilization uh, really took off I see. as a Buddhist civilization. Mm -hmm. That civilization also came into contact with the Greek invaders. Alexander the Great came to that uh, area mm -hmm. and it left an imprint on the art and culture of uh, Gandhara. Mm. So this piece that we are talking about represent the great tradition of the Gandhara art. Mm. We are very proud of this heritage uh, because it is in great shape if you see that. Yes. It's fully intact despite uh, yes. several centuries. Mm. And uh, it reflects Lord Buddha uh, in, in the fasting stage. Mm. If, you, if you recall, before he uh, achieved enlightenment, uh -huh. uh, he was looking for a way for enlightenment. Mm. He was meditating, he was fasting, and during that time, he sat for about 49 days under, under a peepal tree Right. and fasted. Mm. This depicts that time. And look at the intricate manner in which this Buddha has been carved. Yes. You can even see the wings because he became very frail. Yes. And this depicts uh, that uh, condition of frailty. And look at his eyes. In his eyes, it's, there is sadness. Because despite fasting, he was sad that he has not yet achieved enlightenment. Mm. And um, this is something uh, that uh, inspires many, many artists. Mm. 
around the world and of course Buddhists. Yes. Uh, when uh, the Buddhist delegation, the Jogi Order delegation that we just talked about mm -hmm. visited um, the Lahore Museum where, where we have this artifact, they prayed there for a long time. Yes. And uh, it moved them many to tears. Ah. This is how awe-inspiring this piece of art right. is. Right. Wow. wow. I guess you get this question quite a bit, mm -hmm. but Pakistan being a Muslim country, mm -hmm. how does Buddhism fit into a Muslim country? The idea is that, uh, yes, Muslims are a majority, but we live side by side with the people of all faiths right. and we form one nation. Mm. Buddhism over time uh, moved away from the subcontinent. Mm. Uh, there was a competition with Brahmanism in the subcontinent, mm -hmm. Hinduism that was later called, uh, and, the, and Hinduism later prevailed. And Buddhism moved over to East Asia and yes. Sri Lanka and the rest of the right. world and mm -hmm. to Tibet. Mm. And it moved, it, uh, if, if you recall the history, uh, it was the monks who traveled from Gandhara to the rest of the world yes. and uh, introduced Buddhists, Buddhism to them. Yes. Uh, monk Marananta came to Korea mm. uh, in 384, in the yes. 4th century and introduced uh, Buddhism to Korea. So yes, uh, so this is how Buddhism evolved. Yes. Coming back to your question about uh, people of uh, different faiths, Pakistan has a very rich history mm. and uh, traditions. We are a multi-ethnic, multi-religious country. Uh -huh. And uh, there are people of ver various faiths who have a complete independence and um, liberty to profess their religion. Mm. Um, another great religion which was born in uh, today's Pakistan mm. was the Sikh religion. This region has also been home to Zoroastrianism. Uh, it has been home to Hinduism. Uh, many, many religions have lived here over centuries and uh, interacted with each other and prospered over time. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You talked about monk Marananta visiting mm -hmm. Korea mm -hmm. back in 384. Mm -hmm. That's like a long trip. That's true. How did that happen? That shows the devotion of these monks. They traveled on foot or sometimes camels mm. uh, along the um, Silk Road. Right. Uh, most of them traveled from uh, Gandhara and uh, from uh, the regions that now constitute Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Then they moved along the Silk Road to China mm. through the Karokram Mountains, which are very high and snowy and uh, very difficult to traverse. Mm. Then from China onwards, they would travel to the rest of the right. world. Right. So this is how, how he came to uh, Korea, Big Che Kingdom at the time. I see. And uh, th that kingdom at the time was a maritime power. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, it became a springboard of Buddhism to the rest of East Asia, to the introduction of uh, Buddhism to Japan and to the rest of East wow. Asia. It happened from there. So, so Monk Maranansa arrived in the port of Bupsangpo. Uh -huh. And uh, for me, it's uh, very, very inspiring mm. because he was the... I should say first Pakistani who arrived in Korea. Mm, mm. Uh, I, this is a place, uh, a place for saints, but uh, also for historians. Mm. I haven't yet visited, but this is a place where I dream to go. Mm -hmm. I hope very soon. Yes, yes. Um, so after Maran Nanta introduced Buddhism to mm -hmm. Korea, it really flourished 
here. Mm -hmm. um, so monk Hecho from Shilla mm -hmm. Dynasty mm -hmm. wrote a travelogue in which he recorded his journey traveling through the five Buddhist kingdoms in Asia. Mm -hmm. I know that among five kingdoms he visited, mm -hmm. three were in what we now know as Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think we could say monk Hecho was probably the first Korean to visit Pakistan. Is there any record of his visit in Pakistan or is there any history that kind of been passed on? Monk Hecho was, uh, as you say, the first Korean who traveled to today's Pakistan. Uh, he, he was a traveler uh -huh. and uh, he traveled uh, through these five kingdoms, but he also traveled beyond. He even traveled to Iran and then Central Asia, oh. and he wrote his travelogue. And in, in those um, works, he does mention uh, many areas of uh, today's Pakistan. Uh -huh. He mentions uh, Gandhara, uh -huh. he mentions Sawat, he speaks about the people, how they live, mm. uh, about uh, their traditions. So that is the history that we are all relying on. Mm. Unfortunately, these are th this piece of history is something, although very valuable, mm -hmm. this is piece of history is something that not many people are aware of. I see. And uh, this is what we want to rectify. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there have been many seminars in Pakistan, including uh, uh, from uh, Korean scholars uh, who have been invited to right. visit so that we discover together this incredible, incredible history that we have together mm, mm. That, uh, that connects us. Yes. Our two countries' relationship started out through Buddhism and became even closer um, when Pakistan gave financial support to South Korea during the Korean War. This wasn't long after you had your own war, which was Indo-Pakistani War. I don't think it would have been easy for you to provide this financial support. How did you manage that? You know, in 1947, when Pakistan became independent, we were not in a position uh, to promise any troops. Right. Uh, because we were a very nascent country mm -hmm. and uh, we were still trying to build up our own defenses, mm -hmm. but uh, we realized how important it is for countries who are fighting for their independence, mm. for their sovereignty, mm. and uh, how difficult it is when people are going through war. Mm. So financial support and the wheat that Pakistan provided mm. uh, to, to Korea uh, that was part of that consideration right. and um, we were perhaps the third biggest financial contributor to Korea yeah. at the time but um, it was not just during the war that this relationship started. Mm -hmm. In 1948 when uh, Korea had its first elections uh, the, the matter was brought to the UN General Assembly mm. and there was a UN resolution recognize those elections mm. uh, and um, Pakistan voted for that, uh, that resolution. I see. And uh, we um, welcomed those elections mm -hmm. and because of that Korea was uh, allowed to become an observer to the United Nations. It became a member later on in 1991 with, uh, with right. North Korea, right. but it became an observer state uh, in 1948. I see. And uh, later on during the war, mm. the war starts in June. In October, there was again a debate in the UN General Assembly mm -hmm. and a commission was established, a commission on uh, unification mm. and rehabilitation of Korea. Mm. And uh, they had, it had seven members and mm. Pakistan was one of them. Mm. Unfortunately, not much could be achieved. Uh, that commission dissolved in 1970s, but for right. several, several years it uh, existed and it tried to uh, find ways to 
re rehabilitate mm. and uh, unify uh, the two Koreas. Yes, yes. I'm sure mm. all of Pakistan's mm. endorsements mm. Um, were appreciated by the people of Korea. Of course, mm. uh, this, is, this is how it is. Uh, uh, as you said, uh, this relationship is not new. Yes. It is an old relationship. Mm. And uh, 1940s, 1950s, 60s, 70s, this has, this has continued to grow. Mm. Korea being your first posting as an ambassador, you must have ambitious plans to strengthen the ties between the two countries. What are your future goals? My personal goal, I should say, if you have to define one, would be to develop these links between our people, especially mm. the young people of Korea and the young people of Pakistan mm. should rediscover each other, mm. how close we were in the, um, in the uh, 50s and the 60s, and uh, try to rediscover the passion that they had. Right. And uh, then uh, introduce our culture. Mm. Then, of course, tourism is an area where um, I would like to work on. Mm. My goal is to increase the volume of uh, Korean mm. uh, Buddhists mm. or other faiths who would like to visit mm. these uh, very historic uh, sites in Pakistan mm. and see for themselves the beauty and splendor of Pakistan. Oh. Well, we wish you all the success in your aspirations. Thank you so much. <laughs> This is our program's signature question. What is your philosophy as a diplomat? Uh, one of my favorite authors mm. uh, is Oscar Wilde. Mm. He said, there is only one difference between a saint and a sinner. Every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. Mm. And that is something that I actually believe. Mm. That is there, that there is an essential good in every human being. Mm. And uh, that is something that we should discover in each other. Oh. Every individual that we interact, that we come across, we should try to discover that good in that person. Mm. And with that, we can have peace, we can have friendship, and not just at personal level, but uh, this is something that uh, can bring peace between nations and peoples. Mm. Mm. And uh, as a diplomat, I hope I can contribute mm. to, to that vision. Mm. That's an excellent philosophy. <laughs> I, I, I hope it uh, inspires uh, everyone. Yes. Um, I don't know if Oscar Wilde thought about this when he wrote this, mm. but uh, I actually believe uh, there, are, there are ways to uh, find common ground. Mm. And that is my passion. That is what I would like to do. Mm. Mm, lovely. Mm. Thank you so much. Mm. So thank you for the invitation and for the interview. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, in my culture, uh, it is said, a guest who comes honors you with their presence. Aww. So your presence mm -hmm. has honored me. Thank you so much for coming. That's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say goodbye in your language? Khuda Hafiz. Khuda Hafiz. Perfect pronunciation. Thank you. I tried. Huda <laughs> Hafiz. Huda Hafiz. <laughs>